Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Peterson Toyota, Fort Collins, Colorado. Toyota Trucks, moving forward. St. Croix Rods, best rods on earth. I'm Chad Lachance, and welcome to Fishful Thinker. If you're a fan of this show, first thing you're going to notice is we don't have a big boat behind the truck. Nope. Today, our Tundra's got the boat in the back of the truck, and that's a big hint about today's show. The whole thing today is going to be about choosing and using a small boat in your fishing. Now, there's lots of reasons why a small boat's a great advantage. One, you can store it. It's inexpensive. It's easy to get around, but a really major advantage of a small boat can be a situation like this. We've got a drought here in the west. The reservoir is very low, 70 feet low, and you can't launch a full-size boat like my typical ranger, but you can get your little hand launch vessel and get it in the lake and still catch some fish. So today's whole show is going to be how we set this boat up, what we added to it to make it a very effective tool. Maybe not quite as effective as a big boat, but still a great way to catch a lot of fish. So it's going to be a unique show, not something you see a lot of on TV. We've got a beautiful afternoon here in the mountains. It should be a good time. We're going to go get after some trout, but today's show is really more about the boat itself. So it should be fun. Stay tuned and get comfortable. See if we can catch you some big old rainbows from a little tiny boat. One of the first things about a hand launch boat is you got to be able to launch it by hand. And that sounds kind of obvious, but it can be tricky. Now this boat, the way we've set it up, has got lots and lots of stuff added to it and it's too heavy to carry with one person. But I got a set of kayak wheels that I found online right there, strap them on the boat and now I can move it around very easily. So I'll unstrap the kayak wheels, set the boat down, slide it off in the water, put the trolling motors on it and go fishing. But that's one of the key things is the mobility. So if I have to move this boat a couple of hundred yards, it's not a big deal, really. And if you happen to want to use it on a, on a conventional boat ramp that is open, unlike here at Horse Tooth Reservoir, then you can use the regular boat ramp as well. So the wheels are a key piece. Now there's another good opportunity, guys, for a small boat. You got some guys out in the kayak now. And, uh, and you know, that's a great opportunity. I do a bunch of kayak fishing as well. Uh, kayak's a great choice. There's kayaks you can pedal with your feet. There's kayaks that take trolling motors. There's all kinds of good kayaks on the market these days, and it's a great choice. One of the other fun things about the little boat is this is not where we want to fish, but where we are going to fish, we can't go any faster, even with this big motor on here, than we're going. So we might as well troll. And, uh, and in the 10 minutes it'll take us to get to our spot, we could probably catch fish. And in fact, we've already hooked one or two, but those guys in the kayaks got the same thing in mind, and it's a really good call. Get the motor killed here. Now, in the span of time it took us, it took us about, oh, I don't know, less than 10 minutes to idle around here we have caught several trout. And, uh, and these are just average stalkers right here. We expected to catch these guys and we're gonna catch a lot of them, I hope, but we're also gonna catch some big ones. Now, I'm trolling a new Johnson spoon right here. I think spoons are a great thing to troll. This happens to be a Johnson Sprite. Let me get this trout off, see you, buddy. In a new penny color. It's copper on the inside and got some orange and, and, uh, and yellow on the outside of it. And I really like anything with orange in it for trout. So. The, the whole thing about this particular spoon, orange and copper, orange and gold, really good trout choices. So we're gonna throw it around some in here, but the little boat only goes so fast, so you might as well troll the whole time. I can't go any faster. So we've been trolling with a 55 pound thrust motor at approximately five miles an hour, just a little short of five miles an hour in this boat. And we've been bit like six times <laughs> before we got here. So uh, one thing I think about trolling in trout is it's almost impossible to go too fast. In, in this boat, it is impossible to go too fast. The little boat allows us to get in the real, real shallow water that I can't even get in in my big boat. My big boat needs eh, approximately 18 inches to really have any maneuverability, maybe two feet. This thing, I can get up very shallow if I need to. I can touch it on the bottom if I need to, and it doesn't matter. It's a, the boat was lined with rhino liner, or, or actually bullhide liner, and we did that so that it would be extremely durable. And so that was one of the things we did as part of the project, was line the boat with, with liner. And then if I drop stuff, it makes less noise, it kind of deadens the hull up, and it works pretty good to, to, you know, to go about that, that technique. One of the key components of this boat is this big trolling motor on the back, but there's another one on the front of the boat as well. 
And, uh, and what that allows me to do is run the boat from either end, which is really important. So I've got a big 55 pound thrust back here and I've got a smaller 30 pound thrust up there. One of the key things about having a deck like we have here in this boat, is the fact that I can stuff a lot of stuff underneath here. So my personal flotation devices and my throwable, which are required by law, are stuffed underneath the deck. Now it looks like it's a mess right now because we got a lot of stuff in the boat. But the reality is I can stuff most of my stuff underneath the deck and then I've got a wooden deck that we built in here and then the wooden decks actually have padding in them. One thing that's fun about having a really sweet Ranger boat is the decks are padded and carpeted. Well, I went to Ranger Boats and said, hey, I'm building a really cool little boat and I need to have nice soft decks like that. So I have the same marine grade pad underneath this carpet that is found in this in the big big giant bass boat. And so it makes it very comfortable. I barefoot, I love to fish barefoot. I get hard time people give me emails for fishing barefoot, but you know what, I love to fish barefoot. The carpeted padded decks are great for that. I got nice smooth screw heads on here as well, so there's no nothing to snag. There's nothing to snag your fly line if you want to fish with a fly rod in here as well. So that's a key thing. So I changed to a different spoon. This is another, oh, when he came off. <laughs> it's another Johnson spoon. It's, uh, it's called a splinter. And uh, this one happens to be in a chrome trout. So it's kind of trout colored on one side, chrome on the other. And it's very heavy and I can retrieve it. I'm throwing it on six pound nanofill and a seven pound medium light, or excuse me, a seven foot medium light St. Croix Legend Elite and a Revo Premier. And I can literally throw it 100 yards probably. <laughs> and it allows me to cover a lot of water. Well, trout are pelagic, and since they are pelagic, uh, it's a good thing to be able to cover a lot of water. We don't know where they are. I've not attacked these fish at all. This is the first time I've been up in here to fish, and uh, so I don't really know where they're sitting, so it's just a matter of, oh, I just had another bump. It's just a matter of trying to figure out how to cover water, and with trout, speed is always one of the key things. Uh, figuring out speed and cadence can, al can, can always make the difference between a really good day and an average day of trout fishing with, with spinning tackle. I've got several rods in the boat and the way the deck's set up, I can lean them with the reels just below the deck and they lay nice and flat. If you do have two people in the boat, which I commonly do, which uh, then what we do is we will alternate. So one person's rods will be on one side, one person on the other, so you can have multiple rods. And as you know, if you watch this show very much, we pretty much always have multiple rods, even if I'm walking a riverbank or something, it just gives me flexibility of presentations. But uh, by having the stuff mostly stored underneath the decks and the rods on top and a much pared down tackle system, it allows me definitely to be more efficient and to load and unload the boat really quickly. <laughs> oh man, you know guys, we're out here to talk about the boat more than we are the fishing, but these rainbows are chewing up the spoon faster than I can get stuff said, which is pretty funny. And uh, what happened was here at Horses Reservoir, and there's a very average stock of rainbow who looks like he ran into something, there you go brain is something he shouldn't have. But here at Horse Seed Reservoir uh, in the mid-summer of 2012, we had big giant fires in the area and there was a fish hatchery that had to be drained and they brought all those stalkers and they put them in here. And so there's a lot of stalker rainbows in here. Now what we're hoping to contact is some of the brood fish they put in here, which are more like 20 to 30 inches long. Uh, obviously there's uh, something like 80,000 stalkers they put in here and only a small percentage of them were those giants. So we'll see if we can find one of them. In the meantime, here comes another stalker that's fixing to eat my spoon. But uh, there's a bunch of them and you know, spoons and trout go together great. Now this one's a pretty one and we've been trying to kind of decide how to how to go about this gracefully. And uh, this one's a little perturbed, so I think we're gonna use a net on him. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Crazy. Come here, buddy. I got too big of a rod. There we go. Now there's a better one right there, guys. So if we've been fishing about five minutes, it'll take me 20 to get him out of the net. <laughs> if I can get a hold of him gracefully, we'll be doing good. So there's a little bit better quality of what we're looking for right there, guys. So we're gonna get him put back here pretty quick, but that's a nice one to get us going. We'll see you, buddy, and let him get his wits about them here. Now one thing about these brooder fish is they're not, there he goes, took off strong. They're not particularly durable because they hadn't been in this lake all that long yet. I, I would love to have a foot control trolling motor. It's great to be able to fish with both hands free, but a foot control is way too heavy and too bulky to put on a boat as small as this one. It's only 11 and a half feet long and uh, only weighs a couple hundred pounds fully loaded with everything in it. So I certainly wasn't going to put a 50 pound trolling motor on it. So we did instead was just get this little foot button right here. So now whatever I have this button this motor set at, when I step on the button, it turns the power on. So I can make the boat move just by stepping on the button right here. So I still have to steer it, but at least I can control the throttle so that, I, for instance, I can hold the boat in the current or the wind 
by doing it with my toe or with my shoe or whatever the case might be. So the foot control is a really key aspect of this boat that you don't see in very many small boats. And this front trolling motor, I've moved up to the bow of the boat now. The front trolling motor that's up here has uh, been reversed so that I can run it you know, off the front of the boat as opposed to the transom. And then the wiring goes to the back and, uh, and runs to the single battery that's under the back. If you're gonna set up a system like this, then you better, uh, you better consider your battery as being a pretty predominant, you know, major piece. So, got us another rainbow right here, and it's uh, rainbows early and often here this, this evening on Horse Tooth Reservoir, which is kind of really what we came here for. We're gonna try to keep as many of these out of the net as we can, and that's another perfect little stalker rainbow. I started to mention the battery before that fish got a hold of me there. The battery is underneath the rear deck of the boat, so it's back there and underneath the rear deck of the boat, so it's out of the way. It's easy to get to, so I can leave it in the boat and charge it if, I'm, if I want to do that, or I can go ahead and pull it out. It's real easy to get to. It has a lid on it. Boom! Oh, oh. I almost had us another one right there. But the, there you guys got him that time. All right. <laughs> but the battery, here's another nice one, guys. Yeah, there's a nice one right here. All right, so that's a little more what we're looking for, guys, right there. And, uh, we're gonna let him burn out. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> That's all right. That was pretty fun right there. I had him a little closer range than I wanted to when he bit. You know, one of the most important tools we figured out by fishing in the big boats, and for years and years and years I've been using them, is sonar and GPS. And you don't see sonar and GPS in very many real small boats, certainly not 11 and a half or 12 footers like this one. What we've got right here is the Lowrance Mark IV unit. It's got both sonar and GPS power, and the camera can't see the screen and the glare, I realize that, but it's got a very bright screen and uh, it's very easy to read. Now I've got it on an Eagle Claw rod holder right here that was actually made for trolling rods or something like that. And so it's got a clamp on it and I can just release the clamp. I can slide it to the back deck or I can slide it up here to the front deck and the cord just runs with it. So I bring it up here, I tighten down the clamp and boom, now it's right there and it's ready to see here. Now what I also did was made it where you can just pull it up a half a turn and turn it either which way. So it's a custom system. So I can turn it around to you know whichever direction I need it to be so that I can see it. And it works really slick because if I'm sitting on the front deck fishing by myself, I can turn it and watch it from here. Or if I'm idling around the lake, I can move it back there and watch it there. The sonar GPS system is a really, really important upgrade to this boat. I use it all the time. It runs on a separate battery that's about this big, little tiny battery that's mounted under the deck. And it runs this and only this because otherwise you'll most likely pick up interference from your trolling motors if you're running on the same battery. So that's a good tip as well. Separate battery, little tiny separate battery, only weighs a few ounces. To run this unit is a really important part. Uh, last detail about the installation of this is I took the regular skimmer transducer that it comes with in the box and I glued it into the hull, used epoxy and glued it on the inside of the hull. The reason I did that is I want this boat to be as durable as possible. I want to be able to slide it up on the bank or slide it up in the gravel somewhere and not have any problems with it. So the transducer is inside the boat. So if I want to take this unit out, I just unplug it from the back, lift it off the base and we're out. Good trick. Now I'm back to fishing. Just like any other episode of Fishful Thinker, I don't care if I'm in the little boat or the big boat or whatever, anytime I'm out fishing, I'm gonna look to set up a pattern. And one thing I figured out really quick is when we're up on the shallow water that the sonar shows us, throwing into the deep water uh, and then reeling up the hill is when we've gotten our two biggest bites so far. So it's something we'll definitely keep track of. And, uh, and I may find that this throwing up into the shallow water and retrieving down is not as good of a plan. And that's a major thing every, every day is, do I fish shallow to deep or deep to shallow or parallel with my depth line? Those are the three choices you have. The other one is vertical or horizontal. Do I need a horizontal bait like I'm doing here where I retrieve it, which I'm doing because I can cover water and trigger bites with? Or do I want a vertical presentation that's going up and down? If I get to a spot where I know there's a bunch of them stacked up, I'll go to a vertical presentation and if you watch this show very much, you'll know that that'll probably be a gulp minnow. And I'll start jigging that thing up and down in one spot and see what that does. Might be a spoon as well. But it's really, uh, really nice having a foot control, be able to turn the boat like this. I mean, like I said, I still have to steer it, but I can just reach up and slap it one time and steer it however I need, and that works really good. Another good call for catching trout in areas where flies aren't artificial lures our only legal is, uh, look at them all, chase this one. Wow, there's like 15 of them chasing this one. Okay, come here, buddy. They, uh, another really good lure, besides one that's obviously getting chewed up right now for trout like this. There you go, he played nice, love that. 
is, uh, is a hair jig of some sort, a little hair jig, a little feather jig. Really good call. Uh, you know, it's common for me to throw like a marabou crappie jig. Johnson makes a little marabou jig that's a great choice for catching trout. I'm sure these fish would eat it up here. Uh, that's a good choice. A little hair jig. A guy that works with us here at Fishbowl Thinker, Ronnie Castiglione, is one of our guides. He ties up little hair jigs and they flat chew them up. The trout love them and that's a good call as well uh, is something like that. But for now I'm going to keep working the horizontal baits because it's working. Another thing I'm figuring out really quick is they seem to be biting it higher in the water column. My bait's running deeper, so I put the rod tip higher, and then they don't run so deep, and then you catch another one. So that's uh, another key presentation thing. It doesn't matter if I'm in a little boat. Fishing's fishing. Fundamentals are fundamentals. Now this one's a little guy. How come the big guys are swatting at it and missing, and the little guys are getting all of it? All right, get my pliers out. Now with trout, I try not to handle them any more than I have to, because they always make me look bad. So if I can just pop him off there, I'll do that just fine and be perfectly happy with how he played the game. We'll try that again. Pattern detail, rod tip high. So I'll throw it up here. I'm working down a drop off, which I can see on the sonar. Rod tip nice and high to keep the bait from going any deeper than it, than it needs to. And we'll see if we can get it to load up here. Two in a row might be asking for much. <laughs> there he is. Oh, he wants it. They want it to come up. They want it to rise in the water column. Okay. If they want it to rise in the water column, I'll make it rise. If boom, just like that, I give it a pause and it floats. And when it floats, they bite. And when they bite, I get the fun part. <laughs> it's just a little tight, I think. Here, we'll see how he uh, how he does. But we know that the big ones will bite it doing the same thing. We've already caught a couple of them. This might be the smallest one yet. See what we got here. Yeah, then we'll barbless hook him, no problem. He'll come right off. We might even get lucky, he'll come off before you can get to him. Now, one thing you'll notice, guys, I'm standing in my little boat and I'm a big fan of being able to stand and fish. I, I cannot be efficient in terms of casting accuracy or anything else sitting down. So I don't sit and fish very often. But if you're gonna stand in the boat, you need to have a buddy with you and you need to have a throwable immediately handy because this boat's a lot easier to fall out of than a, than a bigger boat would be, obviously. So. If you're going to do it by yourself, probably a good bet to have uh, a life jacket on most of the time. I carry, because I'm trying to keep the boat as light and, and efficient as possible, I carry inflatables in the boat, but I do have a throwable cushion sitting right here on the floor that I can get to if I need to in a hurry. I think some other baits would be really good in this situation, potentially a lipless crankbait. If we had a little bit more wind, a lipless crankbait like a Sabeel flat shad or a or a rattle trap or whatever lipless crankbait you like uh, would be a good call as well. Uh, I would prefer to see a little more wind chop or a little more current for that than what we have right now, uh, but I think that's a good call. Any number of, of deep diving crankbaits, a little flicker shad, like a number four or number five flicker shad would be a really good call. In fact, I'm probably going to tie one of those on here in a minute just to mix it up, and, uh, and I think that would be an excellent call as well. Look at that. They swim right up to it, even sitting still, they're swimming right up and looking at it. Amazing. I'm going to drop it back, see if he'll get it. He wants it. He's sitting right there and looking at it. <laughs> They're not very bright. <laughs> Boom! That's a good one there. Oh, I might have foul hooked him. All right, so here's where our foot control is going to be helpful. If I can keep him falling out of the boat, we'll be doing good. Okay. There we go. That's a little bit bigger one than some of them we caught. Now, not as big as some of the others, and certainly not as big as what we're looking for, so we'll be real quick with him. Easy, buddy, easy. Pliers, always with trout, always people, always. Small boats have so much versatility to them. Uh, you know, we're in an 11 and a half foot crowd I'd like we keep talking about, but it could be a canoe, it could be a kayak, like we also talked about, but it could be a true John boat, uh, even with a small gas motor on it in some cases. There we go. Oh, and he's going nuts too. <laughs> could be a small gas motor. It could be, you know, big electric motors. If uh, another possibility is, is personal pontoons. There's been a bunch of personal pontoons that have come out. They're actually hard bottom boats. They're they're little, actually just like a regular pontoon boat, but they're only like six, seven, eight feet long, and they're hard boats. They're really cool little boats. And uh, come on, there. There you go. There you go. Just shaking them off with the 
with the pliers is much easier than dealing with the fish and also easier on the fish. And that's my single biggest reason for doing that. All right, here we go. We know the angle, we know the spot, we know the lure. We got one. <laughs> that's how pattern fishing works. <laughs> Oh, and it doesn't matter what kind of boat I'm in. It matters that the fundamentals are being followed and the fish are behaving accordingly. They're easy there, buddy. Easy there. And I'll tell you what, matching your tackle to the size of your fish is really key. This is six pound test nana fill and a medium light St. Croix, a little tiny Revo spinning reel. So it makes even average sized trout like these uh, are a lot of fun to catch with it. And you get one of them on big ones to bite. There's a cut bow as well. There you go, buddy. Hopefully you've enjoyed our outing in the little boat right here. Hopefully it's given you some ideas to look around and maybe create your own boat. Maybe a canoe or a little Coleman crawdad like this or maybe a full-on John boat. But the idea of being in the little boat, it's fun, it's simple. Some well thought out additions like the sonar and GPS and the decks and trolling motors at both ends are really good things to have in the boat. The one thing this boat doesn't have is navigation lights. So it is getting dark. It's time for us to get off the water and we're going to have to do that on this episode of Fishful Thinker. We were really hoping to find a really big trout. Uh, found some nice ones, but didn't find any giants. But man, for less than two full hours of fishing time, we caught a lot of fish and had a good time doing it. Hopefully you've enjoyed the show. So check out fishfulthinker.com. Join us on Facebook and most of